Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This video we are going to be getting back to work on some of my personal vehicles after uh, working on some other stuff last few videos. Uh, time to get to work on the Jeep. I know I've been saying I've had a bunch of parts laying around for this thing, so now it is finally time to start tackling some of these upgrades. Uh, so this video is actually probably going to be a part one of a two-parter going through the suspension. Uh, I'm going to concentrate on the rear in this video, and then I will do a second video on the front most likely, uh, as I do have a few, you know, quite a few things to get done and walk through with both uh, the front and the rear suspension on the Jeep. So that being said, I am going to get the camera turned around and start walking through what is coming in this video. All right, so here is what is going in, and I'm going to apologize. I have a hawk circling overhead screaming. You will probably hear that in the background, just like that. He is very loud, or she. Uh, whichever it is, flying overhead, making plenty of noise. But anyway, um, this, uh, you yeah, know, if you follow my channel, a couple years ago, I did an upgrade video, or it actually might have been last year, I can't remember, uh, where I've already gone through the suspension on this once, just doing puck lifts in the back, um, and a rough country set up in the front. Changed uh, the spacers in the back a few times, um, and been pretty happy with it so far. Uh, where this is beginning from is I went ahead and ordered a full set of Bilstein shocks for it. Um, two rear, two front, and it also came with a steering damper, the set I ordered. Uh, with this set, it does require a minimum of a two inch lift in the rear. My current lift in the rear is a 1.3. So that being said, I'm gonna be putting in those shocks. And then I did get two inch spacers from Extreme Terrain. They're just like a solid aluminum spacer that goes under the spring. And because I'm now gonna be two inches higher than factory, I went ahead and got new sway bar links from evo that are direct fit for the gladiator they have like a universal one that a lot of the places sell that just gives you the round links and you're supposed to bolt them in that will not work with the gladiator unless you want to really do a lot of custom fabricating you need ones that have the bolts in to go through the brackets that are mounted on the chassis so um, went ahead and got the direct fit style uh, extended rear bar links as well. So this video is going to walk through going through the installation of all of these parts. Um, also with this one, uh, when I did my previous video, I did not loosen up any of the control arms that, you know, I figured I wasn't going that high. It wasn't going to make that big of a difference. Kind of regretting not doing that just because it is really the proper way to do it. So I'm going to walk through that as well. So I'm going to get this thing up in the air, loosen up all the bolts for the upper and lower control arms as well as the track bar and then we can go ahead and start getting things installed. So obviously the uh, first thing we need to do, get it up in the air, use a, um, I've got a three ton floor jack with a extension that can go, or it pivots out for lifting SUVs and trucks. Let's use that, got it high enough up where there was probably about five inches under the tires and then loosen the tires up, got those off and uh, I'm about to set it back down on the jack stands under the frame rail uh, so that way it will be supported there and there will be enough droop room in the axle so you can go ahead and get it down low enough uh, for um, putting the spacers in. So I'm going to go ahead get that lowered down and uh, get the jack out of the way. So here you can see my existing spacers again those are like a 1.3 I think is the uh, height on those and you can also kind of see how stretched out the sway bar is because the end link is you know, too short for it, basically. So what I am going to do next is start working on loosening things up. Uh, I'm gonna grab uh, wrenches, ratchets, things like that, and start just loosening all of the four uh, control arms, the two uppers, two lowers, as well as the track bar, nuts and bolts one. You know, Here's the upper mount and then the lower mount on the other side. Get those loosened up, and then it'll be time to remove the sway bar end links and then finally the shocks. And I'll do those side by side uh, as I'm just swapping the spacers out on each side because I'm gonna need to put a jack underneath of the uh, axle on each side in order to loosen things up and get uh, everything moved appropriately. So yeah, first thing up is going to be the control arms. And everything's been loosened up. Uh, that's again, all the upper and lower control arm bolts and then the two bolts and nuts for the track bar. Um, the heads on the control arms, these are 21 millimeter on all of them. The other side, it's a 24 millimeter. Um, in my opinion, and the way I did it is I put an air gun on the 21 mil side 
and just he had a 24 millimeter box wrench on the other side and that was the best way to get him out uh, trying to go from the nut side it's really hard to get access uh, the only one I couldn't use an air gun one or air gun on was this one so I just doubled up a 21 mil wrench with a 22 mil wrench uh, for leverage I was able to loosen uh, these ones up doing it that way um, so yeah so we are good to go as far as those go everything's loosened up so now it's going to come down to the individual sides and that is going to be removing the sway bar link and then removing the shock and that will give me the droop I need to go ahead and swap out the spacer. So I'm gonna go ahead, get a jack under the side of the axle and start removing those parts. As you can see, shock is removed. Um, that's pretty straightforward. It's a 21 millimeter on each side. So I just put a wrench on the nut side, which goes to the inside and then just pushed this back and got the impact on that. And then also the sway bar link has been removed. Uh, it's a little more difficult. It's an 18 mil bolt up here, pretty straightforward, but to remove the link here, it's an 18 mil nut, and then you have a six millimeter hex that you have to use to hold it in place. Uh, as you can see, I do have a jack under the axle for now. And one other thing I did was I disconnected the uh, controller for the uh, locking differential. Uh, make sure that wire is disconnected so you don't have it hanging up. And I also kind of adjusted where it clips to. I moved the clip from uh, where it was on a different wire to just clipping it to the breather hose so it'll have that much more flex. So uh, next thing on the list is to lower the jack and get the spring out and swap these spacers. All right, so a couple other little updates. I realized with this kit now, I am now at the limit of what the brake hose is. So I did go ahead and unbolt the two 10 millimeter bolts from the caliber bracket. You just need like an 18 millimeter, I think it is to hold the spinners there that they thread into and then it's yeah 10 millimeter heads on the two caliber bolts actually kind of wanted to do this to inspect my rear brakes because i had a feeling they were near the end and they are definitely getting low so that will be an upcoming video rear brakes on my jeep um but anyway i now have everything down it's gone low enough where the spring is loose I move around so i can go ahead and work on removing the spring and the old spacer and then go ahead and get the new spacer installed all right spring is out as well as the spacer so here is what was in it. Again, it's like a 1.39 or something like that. And then here is what is going in. This is a two. So I'm gonna go ahead, uh, start installing the spring. I basically just had to step down on this end just to get a little bit more clearance then I was able to walk it out. Uh, so when you do put it back in, just make sure that your spring lines up on the inside of the cap where it was. And then also that your tab goes through the hole that it should go through in the top of the seat. I show you it is right there kind of in the center of the screen you'll see it in the seat there's a hole there that that tab needs to go through so just make sure you have everything lined up properly and just get it put back in place and go from there and everything is loosely in place that was actually easier than I expected it to be uh, if you look up there it's hard to see but you can see the little nub is sticking there it is right next to the blue cross member, but that's the little nub where it needs to come up through. Uh, it's just not all the way up because I need to raise the jack some more. But uh, yeah, basically I walked to the top of the spring in and kind of held that in place with one hand. And then I put the spacer into the bottom of the spring and I was able to just walk it up and over the lip that it needs to fit on on top of the spring perch. So now I can go ahead, jack this up a little bit to get it held in place more securely and then get the shock in place to hold it where it is supposed to be for now. And here's the shock that's going in as it comes from the manufacturer. It is bound, not extended. Here is the part number. I have I wrote that R there because uh, it came with a box of five, so I just wanted to make sure I had the fronts, the rears, and the steering one marked properly so I knew which ones to grab. So this is one of the rears. That's the part number. I am gonna go ahead and get the upper mount installed, and then uh, we'll get the lower installed, and should have everything bolted in place. All right, upper and lower bolts loosely in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the strap, get that removed. And then, uh, yeah, next I can start just reassembling the brakes assembly because it's not gonna need to droop anymore. Uh, get that put in place and then I'm gonna move over to the other side. I just don't wanna worry about this falling off or anything. So let me get that put in back in place and then I'll move over to the other side and repeat what I just did. 
All right, everything is back in place and attached where it's supposed to be. Um, I just snugged down the shocks, but I still haven't torqued them yet. Uh, one thing I will point out is these shocks definitely allow a lot more droop than the factory ones. To the point where I was, when, it, when I released it initially with the jack, it was starting to stretch the brake hose. So I went ahead, jacked it back up, and put a jack stand under this side just so it wasn't you know, going to put any tension on that. Now I'm sure once the sway bar links are hooked up, then that problem will no longer be there. Uh, even though they're going to be extended, it'll still uh, keep the rear end from going down too far but right now with the sway bar disconnected it definitely wants to go down and stretch the brake hose so just something to think about when you're doing this installation so that being said this side is as wrapped up as I'm going to do it right now I need to go do all the same work on the other side swap out the spacers and whatnot and then we can get everything jacked up uh, to ride height and then torque down all the control arms so let me get moved over to the other side and get everything swapped into place over here on the other side, getting ready to go. And I can't remember if I mentioned it previously, but before I did start trying to swap the spring on that side, I did come over here and remove the top nut on the sway bar so that wasn't binding me up and I would have enough movement on the other side. So uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and get this shock loosened up, get everything lowered down and swap out the spacer. And here we go, driver's side is done. If you look up there carefully, you can see the little nub sticking through like it should. Um, shock is lightly tensioned in place, not torqued, and I put the caliper back in place, and I did also notice I am gonna need pads on this side as well. So yeah, they're both worn down in the back, so that will be on the to-do list coming soon. Uh, I probably will get extended brake hoses when I do the brakes, just because I'm gonna have to bleed them anyway to flush the fluid, and might as well uh, better be safe than sorry. Like I said, going with the sway bar links, it shouldn't have that much swoop, but uh, or you know that much movement, but yeah, you never know. Um, but anyway, I did notice that the other side I put the shock on with the other writing on the outside. I'd rather have the part number sticking out, so I'm going to swap that one around when I get back to the other side. But first thing I am going to do is work on the sway bar end link for this side, just so I can keep this side from drooping down too far and messing up my brake hose. So I'm going to go grab those parts, get things measured, and uh, show you how I'm going to put things together. So here is the Evo end link. I started assembling it. Um, yeah, this is the end that's going to be the reverse thread with the groove in it. So I put this fitting in there, just like a thread or two, that fitting in the other end. Um, on this fitting came two spacers, and what you do is you reuse your factory bolt for that attachment point there. So what I'm going to do is, and I looked online, I'm going to put the long spacer here, then it's going to be the ball joint, and then the small spacer will space this out from the bracket. Uh, that's how you want to do it. I'm guessing this large one is because this washer is captured on the bolt and they don't want to have interference with the heim joint. And then that right there comes with everything you need. There's a washer, a nut, and the uh, threaded portion, or the uh, hex, so you can hold it in place. Now, one thing I did notice uh, when I messed around on the other side is this fitting does ever so slightly not fit in the sway bar. So what you're gonna to need to do, it appears, is open up that hole ever so slightly. It just barely will not go in. Uh, so I just need to go get a drill bit, open that up ever so slightly, and then I can go ahead and measure my stock end link. And I'm just gonna add two inches, basically, because this is a two inch lift. So the length of this, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. And I'll just go two inches longer, lock that one down, and get it installed. All right, open up the hole, now fits through. It was a half inch bit. It barely needed, you know, just a little bit of opening, but now the hole is the right size. I did the other side as well, so we're good there. And then measuring stock end length, it is 10 and a half from center to center. So I need to make this 12 and a half from center to center. So I'm gonna go ahead, get that adjusted, and then uh, get everything tightened down. And end link is in and torqued. So basically I got it to the 12 and a half inch long, which is pretty much all the threads that I have on this one that I purchased. Uh, as I said, you stack the larger spacer, the link, and then a smaller spacer, use your factory bolt. This is torqued to 50 foot pounds, uh, and that uses an 18 mil. This is the hardware that comes with the kit. This is a three quarter nut, and then you have it's hexed on the inside to hold it in place. That's a 5 8 and that is torqued to 60 foot-pounds. So this is all in place, good to go. We have our 
sway bar end link on this side. Uh, so now I can go over to the other side, do the same, and also swap that shock around. And then I can start working on tightening up all the other fasteners once I jack the axle up to ride height. One other thing I did forget to mention, uh, for tightening the jam nuts, those are three quarter as well on each end. And I used an 8AN um, wrench on this body so it wouldn't mar the finish. So just a heads up on that. And back on the passenger side, I did spin around the shock so it's facing the way I want it to now. And 12 and a half and everything is torqued. Same thing on this side for the end link. So what I did do is I removed the jack from the other side, jacked it up, and then removed the jack stand I had over here. Let it settle, and it does, even with you know, the links attached, there is enough play in the bar where it is going to pretty much droop all the way down to stretch the brake lines. So I definitely will need new brake lines when I do the brake job on this. So that is something that is on the list to buy as well. Um, that being said, I now have jacked it up to the point where it's just off the jack stands there. So this is basically ride height for the rear. The jack is underneath the pumpkin. So now I can go ahead and torque all of the lower control arms, the shocks, and the rear track bar. So starting with the shocks, I'm going to do uppers and lowers, both to 75 foot-pounds, and I'm going to do them on both sides, so those will be all taken care of. Again, 21 mil on both sides, both nut and bolt head. So I'm going to go ahead and get that knocked out. Shocks are torqued. Next, I'm going to do the upper control arms. This end is 95, that's the axle end. The body frame end is 120 foot-pounds, so I'm going to go ahead and get those torqued. And uh, then I can move on to the lowers. I'll come back with the torque specs for those when I'm ready to start those. All right, both uppers, both ends are done. So now it's the two lowers. Uh, each end is 90 foot pounds, so that's pretty easy to do. Uh, same thing, 21 millimeter bolt with a 24 millimeter nut. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock those all down to 90 foot pounds. Lowers are done, and that just leaves the rear track bar. Those are 90 foot pounds on each end. This is a 21 and a 21. And then it's a 21 with a, um, a captive nut on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and get those torqued down to 90. And that will be it as far as torquing suspension. And track bar is torqued. And I also went ahead and put the connector back on the e-diff. So if you have an electronic diff, make sure that you reconnect that as well. Uh, so last thing I need to do is get the tires put back on and uh, get everything torqued and back on the ground. And there we have it, back on the ground. Rear wheels are reinstalled and torqued to 130 foot-pounds per the spec. So that is going to wrap up this video. Uh, part two of it will be out probably in a week and that is gonna be the front suspension. Um, I'll walk through everything I'm gonna be doing with that. And uh, yeah, walk you through the step-by-step -step of getting the front end knocked out, which will be longer lower control arms, new shocks, and a new steering stabilizer. So uh, if you want to follow along, if you like what you're seeing, please hit like, please hit subscribe, please hit the notification bell. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. I do review them and I will reply. And that being said, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.